you will be provided with a link to access the online classroom. On the login page, enter your name and click Login. Some computers may want verification that you initiated the software download. Agree, and the software will continue to take you to the online classroom. If it's your first time to use Collaborate, or if there's been an update, you may be prompted to select your connection speed. When you arrive in the online classroom, you will see that it's made up of several panels. The main tool panel, this one is similar to what it looks like on a Mac, the audio video panel, the participants panel, the chat panel, and the whiteboard. Though you most likely will not be the first moderator in the room, when you are, you need to get a few things in place. Turn on drag and drop so that students can get themselves into courses. Turn on student profile pictures. This will let students that have added profile images show it in front of their names, as you see here for the moderator. Next, you will add the main room FAQs. The main room FAQs are at a web address on the net, so you'll need to use a tool called Web Tour. To start the Web Tour, click on the Web Tour button. This will change us from whiteboard mode to Web Tour mode. Enter the Web Tour URL into the address field and hit Return. The FAQ will load and play individually for each participant. This URL was provided to you when you were sent your moderator link. You would use the same procedure if you had a website that you wanted to take students to during class time. Now that the main room is set up, it's time to set your current class up. Your class will run in a breakout room so that if students in the next class begin to arrive before this class wraps up, the crossover will not be distracting. Click on Tools, Breakout Room, and Create Breakout Rooms. You will need to name your room, tell how many rooms to make, and select a Distribute option. Let's set up one room called My Class and select Don't Move Participants. Click Create. Now we have a room with its own text chat, sound system, and whiteboard apart from the main room. Drag and drop your name to enter the room. This is how students will enter as well. Now you will need to load your teaching slides. You can drag and drop the whiteboard file to the gray area above the whiteboard to load them. Another way is to click Load Content. Yet another way is to click File open and use the file picker to find the slide set on your computer. To navigate from slide to slide, use the arrow buttons. If you want to roam through the slides without the students following, use the double arrows. If you want the students to be able to freely roam through the slides, be sure that follow is not checked. You can undock the navigation panel with the menu icon. When the panel is floating, you can see the rooms and do such things as rearrange the slide order, delete a group of slides, or move them from one room to another. Now set the timer to count down to class time if it's less than 10 minutes to start time. Click the information icon. Click Start Timer. Set the countdown time to the amount of time yet to go before starting. In the name field, enter something like we will begin in. Click Start. The timer will display to all rooms. You can load video and flash media to share with students. To load the files, click Window and Show Multimedia Library. Load your content before the students arrive so that they will have it downloaded by the time you need to play it. Click the Load icon and find the file on your hard drive. The status bar will tell you when the upload is complete. It also indicates if all students have the file downloaded to their systems. When you are ready to play the media, click on the file name in the file list and click the play icon. The media will play for the students in a window that hovers over the whiteboard area. That media window can be resized if needed by grabbing and dragging the lower corner. If you close the window, the window will also close for all participants. You can also stop playback with the stop icon. When you need to delete the file, just go to the library, click on the file in the list, and click on the trash icon. The library will hold files up to 20 megabytes each, with a total of 100 megabytes in all. 
Students will soon begin to arrive in the main room. Experienced students will know to drag and drop to your room, but you may need to help new students to the room and show them how to drag and drop. If a student has the word away by their name, they are not at their keyboard. In the time before class, you can encourage students to create a profile picture. Let's help Zachary create a profile so that he can get a picture in front of his name. Tell him to click on his name. It will turn blue where his name is. He should right-click and look for Profile in the menu and click it. There are a lot of settings here. To add a picture, he needs My Profile. This is what My Profile looks like. Clicking Change lets me update my profile picture. Tell students not to share too much information, just their first name is fine. While the student's here, he can adjust the Audible notifications to suit his liking. Click on Audible Notifications. The various sounds can be listened to by clicking on the speaker icon. Students can deselect any that they feel become tiresome and turn on ones that they feel that they need. Most students figure out text chat to the room without any prompting. They just type in the chat window and click the enter button on their keyboard. Students can click the smiley face to add smileys to their text chat. In the first few weeks of class, especially with middle schoolers, you will see a lot of these in text chat until the novelty begins to wear off. When someone is typing, you will see an icon by their name to let you know it. Students can direct chat specific students by double-clicking on their names, or if they want to talk to a group of students, they can hold down Command, Control, or Shift keys to select a group of students. When they are direct chatting, they will get a tab like you see here for moderators. To talk to everyone, the Room tab is clicked. To chat specifically with a selected par group of participants, they use the tab with the participants' names. Before class begins is a good time to be sure everyone's audio is working well. Type in, Can you hear me? while talking on the mic, since if they can't hear you, they wouldn't hear you ask the questions unless you typed it. Invite students to use their mics by clicking the Talk button. Often, a student's audio and video panel will be minimized, as you see here. Clicking the triangle will maximize it, and click dragging the title area of the panel will allow it to float freely and be resizable. Either way, minimized, as you see here, or floating, as you see here, students can make adjustments. If they cannot hear or be heard, they can click the Audio Setup Wizard and adjust their settings as needed, or use the slider bars to adjust the volume. When someone talks, you can tell who it is because their avatar will show up in the audio and video window if it's not minimized. Their blue icon on their mics will show up as well. By default, four can talk at the same time, but you can adjust that to be up to six at a time. Just click on the audio menu icon, then Maximum Simultaneous Talkers. Set the slider to one to six as needed. Another important aspect of the audio is watching for student lag indicators. If you see a mic icon with a few orange squares, the classroom is indicating that someone is not hearing the audio live time. The software is compressing the participant's audio stream to catch them up. The more squares, the more significant the lag. If you see red squares, the lag is more significant. Try to find a good place to get off mic and let them catch up faster. Sometimes I'll ask the students a question to get off the mic in a natural place. The lagging student will likely catch up while students are typing in answers. If a student lags a lot, it may be because their bandwidth is not allowing enough of the audio to get through. Ask them to pause any downloads that may be causing it. When class begins, you may want an easy way to take attendance. Save a quick list by clicking File, Save, and Participants List. This will save a text file to where you specify on your hard drive. There are a set of tools in the Participants List that are ideal for students to use during a presentation. They can use emoticons to show their feelings. These show up by their names. They can show when they're away from the keyboard. Veritas has been away for a while now. Hmm. Ah, that's better. There is a hand raise button. That also rings a bell if you have the audible notifications for it turned on in the profile. And there's polling. You can set up several kinds of polls. Students can vote and then you can publish the response to the whiteboard for all to see. 
As you can see here, you can adjust whether they can see each other's votes or not while they are voting. And you can lock their votes at some point so that they cannot change it. The polling tool is best for informal polls or quizzes. If you want something that will have a record of their answers, try the LMS quiz tools and use web tour or a link posted in chat to send them to it. The online classroom has many tools that the students can use to interact with, such as chat, mic, webcam, whiteboard, application sharing from their desktop, and web tour. You can control what tools the students have on an individual or an entire classroom basis. To give and take tools globally, click on the participant panel menu. If there is a check, the students have that tool as a global default. You can adjust the tools as you need. If you need a student or a group of students to have or not have a tool compared to the global default, you need to click to select the students or the group of students. There is a menu icon that will show when students are selected. Click on it and adjust the tool privileges as needed. The whiteboard is a very interactive environment. The toolbar is here. The top tool is the selector tool. With it selected, you can click on an object to select and drag and move them. A right click gives you additional tools such as copy, paste, or changing the stacking order. The pointer tool is next. Clicking will show the pointer options. Left click and hold will make the pointer visible to everyone in the room. There are two pens. One will do a solid line and the other one like a highlighter. There is a text tool and also a text tool with word wrap. The word wrap one is the one with the lines. There are solid and filled circles and rectangles as well. And this one is the line tool. Obviously that one's going to help you make lines. Now the pen, the text, the shape, and the line tool all have the capacity for you to change the colors. All you have to do, when this, this panel will open up by itself, all you have to do is click on the little color well. It'll open up this panel that gives you swatches, HSB, and RGB options for setting the color. Most of the time you'll probably just use the swatches. What you do is just click on the color that you want to have, and then it'll change whatever it is that you've selected or whatever it is you're going to put on the screen to that color. It'll also keep a track on the recent colors that you've chosen. Another interesting feature is that you can change the opacity. All you have to do is click on the little triangle that's pointing downward and it gives you a slider bar to control the opacity setting. It goes anywhere from being completely invisible to 100% opaque. For some of them, such as the line tool and the pen tool, you also have stroke controls. Doing the little drop down will allow you to be able to change the stroke number. The larger the number, the thicker the stroke. The classroom has several preloaded clipart sets in the clipart library. The backgrounds are only available to moderators and can be used as substitutes for the blank slide. You can also add your own custom clipart in the whiteboard tools section. Custom clipart is actually stored on that computer. If you sign in from a different computer, your custom art will not be accessible to you. The bottom tool is a screenshot taker. It can take screenshots of anything on the computer desktop. The online classroom will minimize to get out of the way for the snap. Application sharing is used to share what you have on your desktop. Be sure that the software you want to share is running and not minimized so that it will be in the list. The icon up here will turn on application sharing. You can select the software you want to share or share your whole desktop. Perhaps you have some software that students need to see in operation. You may want students to see you pointing to places on a web page. Application sharing doesn't share the audio from your computer, though, unless you locate and set up other applications or a patch cord that specifically can reroute sound from your speakers back to your mic. If you choose to share your desktop, you can grab a corner of the screen share window to resize what you share. If you share an application, the application sharing will adjust as you change the size of the application sharing window for that particular software. If a window pops up from another application while you're sharing a specific software, that area covered up by the pop-up will be grayed out. Be aware that if you're sharing your whole desktop, surprise pop-ups can be distracting to participants.
So, turn off reminders, instant messaging, and other interruptions before you begin. Also, realize that if you type in a username or password, it'll be visible to participants. So, sign in to password protected sites before you begin application share. You can let students actively interact with the software by sharing control with them. You can encourage them to click the request control button in the application sharing window near the top. You will get a message asking if they may. If you grant the request, you need to leave your mouse or pen controls alone so you'll not be fighting over the movement of the cursor. It is easy to remove shared control when you're ready. You can send a screenshot to the desktop if you need to, and then the students can annotate it. To pause or stop the application sharing, use the pause or stop button. Webcams can be used by moderators and also by students when they have the tool privilege. The triangle allows students to toggle between viewing and minimizing the camera stream. The window can be made larger by undocking it with a click-drag to make the panel float and pulling the bottom corner to enlarge. To activate a camera, participants will click the preview button. When they're satisfied with the video, they click the video part of the button and their camera will be visible. Clicking video again will turn off their stream. Click the audio and video panels menu icon. You can change the number of simultaneous cameras that Collaborate will allow from 1 to 6. You can also adjust which camera will get the larger picture area. When set to make video follow moderator focus, whatever camera you double click on in the video window will be the larger one. If set to make video follow speaker, whoever is using the mic will be the largest camera view. If class finishes up early before the time slot is done, set up a mic and chat breakout room with some blank slides and the room turned on. This gives students some time to get to know each other and to use the online classroom tools, draw around on the whiteboard, etc., and it helps to strengthen that social aspect of the classroom. When ready to leave the classroom, participants just close the classroom software as they would any other software on their computer.